Mark chapter number 4, verse number 35, the Bible says, In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Let me just stop right there. If Jesus is on board your ship, it won't sink. Right. Amen. Just thought I'd throw that out. It goes on to say in verse 38, And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they wake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for already helping us in the service. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for blessing in the jail service and the one that was saved over there. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, we need your help today. No telling the burdens that folks are carrying this morning. No telling the obstacles they face and the problems they face. <clears throat> Father, no telling how much the devil's beat up on some of them. So, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd bind every power of hell. Yes. I do pray that, Lord, you'd speak now to every heart. Manifest yourself in a personal and powerful way. Father, I pray that those that need hope, they'd find it in Jesus. I pray for those that need help, they'd find it in Jesus. Father, I pray for those that may be lost, that today would be the day they realize they need the blood applied to their life. They'd come and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray for those that, Lord, uh, need a touch, you'd touch them. And I pray for every other need that, Lord... Uh, people would reach up to you as you're reaching down to them. Now, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray that, Lord, you'd uh, have your will and way, and you'd speak to hearts. And I pray that you'd be magnified and glorified above all things. Lord, we sang to God be the glory, and Lord, that is our desire, that you truly would receive the glory. Have your will and way now. We'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. I want you to notice, first of all, the command. In verse number 35, he says, Let us pass over unto the other side. He didn't say, If it's convenient, let us pass over. He didn't say, If we don't have any obstacles, let us pass over. He gave them a command to get in the ship and to pass over unto the other side. Right. That's why uh, in verse number 40, he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He commanded them what to do, but they didn't have faith in what he had to say. First sight of trouble. They lost their faith because they was looking at the trouble. We see the command, then we see the calamity in verse number 37. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. I'd like to tell you that I have great faith. But if I'm on a ship in the middle of a sea, and it's a great storm, and the winds are blowing, and the rain's coming in, and the ship gets full of water... I don't know that I'd have any faith either. Hmm? But there is a great calamity. They're going through a storm, uh, and uh, it's gotten severe. 
Can I say, one writer said, you're either in a storm, you're just coming out of a storm, or you're fixing to go into a storm. Uh, Job said that man's days are few uh, and full of trouble. Uh, uh, friend, it seems like we spend a lot of days in the valley uh, just for a few days to get to the mountaintop, uh, only to find ourselves headed to another valley. Uh, 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 can I say, uh, we may face storms, uh, and we may face valleys, uh, and we may face problems, uh, but if you know the Lord, you'll never face them alone. Uh, he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, their problem uh, was they weren't doing what he was doing. Uh, he was in the hinder part of his ship uh, asleep on a pillow. Uh, say, what was he doing? He wasn't upset about the storm. Uh, you and I would be better off uh, if we just find rest in the Lord uh, and we wouldn't be troubled by everything that's going on. Uh, let me help you with something. Uh, I don't know who's going to win the election coming up, uh, 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 but I do know the Lord does. Uh, and I do know the Bible says it's the Lord that sets people and kings up in, uh, into authority. Uh, and the Lord's in control of it. Uh, all we can do is cast our vote. Uh, but friend, uh, if all your hope is dependent upon who's in the White House, you're in trouble. Uh, uh, because regardless of who it is, there'll still be storms. Uh, but if your hope uh, is in the one that sits on the throne in glory, uh, uh, friend, let the winds blow. Uh, let the waves get high. Uh, it does not matter because he still is Lord of all. Uh, can I help you something? And I told Brother Doug, Brother Doug said we ought to pray that Kamala gets in. We ought to pray that all the wars break out. We ought to pray that everything gets bad because that just means the Lord's coming back quicker. But I told him, I said, I, I'm hearing where uh, uh, Russia's heating up, about ready to fire up some nukes. We may not even make it to election, friend. You better know the Lord. Mm. We see the command, we see the calamity, but notice the calm, if you will. Look in verse number 39. The Bible says, And he arose, he rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Uh, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mm. Told you, he's on the throne. Yeah. He's in control. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of people wanting a check from the government. I'd rather have assurance from the Lord. There's a lot of people uh, uh, trusting on uh, 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 who in the world's going to get elected. Uh, can I say this? I can't wait till it's all over. I'm tired of seeing them Sherrod Brown and Bernie Marino commercials. Uh, Brother Adrian asked who was running to take McConnell's place. I said, I can't. I don't know because all I see is Sherrod Brown and Bernie Marino. I mean, every 37 seconds I'm watching one of them commercials. Huh? I don't even care if either one of them get both of them seem like they're they're sorry no good lying dogs. I don't care if either one of them gets in, and it's Ohio. Who cares? We're in Kentucky, huh? But can I say, no matter how severe your storm is, the Lord is the only one that can calm it. And sometimes He calms the storms, but sometimes He calms you and I. Hmm? And I'd much rather have Him and His assurance than all that money can buy. Well, there's a whole lot of preaching in all this, and I don't have time to, to hit all of it, uh, uh, but I'm interested uh, uh, in his command in verse 35. And the same day when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And with God's help for a few minutes, I want to preach this morning on let us pass over unto the other side. I don't know about you, friend, but I'm looking forward to the other side. I'm looking forward to passing over unto the other side. Most of you know my friend, Brother Luther Spivey. Brother Luther, great preacher, great man of God, uh, uh, pastored for uh, uh, some 25 or 30 years. Then God called him into missions, and he's uh, uh, built uh, uh, over 250 churches in Mexico City and South. Uh, I mean, in some of the worst areas, uh, some of the most dangerous areas. Uh, there's a Bible preaching church there because Brother Spivey was faithful uh, to mind the Lord. Uh, uh, Brother Spivey, back in February, 
February, had a massive stroke. Uh, they didn't think he was going to live. When they called me, uh, it was looking glim. It was looking bad. Uh, 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 we thought Brother Spivey was uh, going to cross over. Uh, uh, can I say preaching revival down there two weeks ago for his son-in-law. Uh, uh, the doors opened up. Here come Brother Spivey and Miss Nancy. Uh, what a blessing to my heart uh, uh, to see that darling man of God. Uh, and he wanted to come and surprise us uh, and be in the meeting. Uh, and oh, we had a good time. Well, Brother Spivey called me this week. Wanted to know about Brother Bobby. Had heard Brother Bobby uh, had crossed over and we was talking. Uh, and Brother Spivey said, Brother Doug, uh, back in February, uh, they weren't giving me much hope. Uh, Brother Doug, I thought uh, uh, my time had come. Uh, and this is what he told me, Brother Clint. Uh, he said, uh, Brother Doug, I could see uh, the other shore. Uh, and he said, I was ready to cross. Uh, and he said, but I don't know who it was. Uh, but somebody told me it wasn't my time yet. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, we got so close to this thing winding down, uh, we could almost see the other shore. Uh, and I'm glad, hallelujah, to have hope uh, that we can pass over unto the other side. Uh, uh, what a blessing that's going to be. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 first of all, there's the wonder of the other side. Uh, the wonder of the other side. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.9, uh, But as it is written, uh, I hath not seen, uh, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man uh, the things which God hath prepared uh, for them that love him. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, there's never been a picture painted as beautiful. Uh, there's never been a song written as beautiful. Uh, there's never been thought that are beautiful. There's never been a scene that is as beautiful as what the other side has in store for you and I. According to that Bible, nobody's seen its beauties. Nobody's heard anything as beautiful. It hasn't even entered in our wicked hearts how beautiful things are on the other side. But I would want you to consider the benefits of the other side. The Bible says in Revelation 21 and 4, uh, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, uh, and there shall be no more death, uh, neither sorrow, uh, nor crying, uh, neither shall there be any more pain, uh, for the former things are passed away. Uh, can I say on the uh, other side, there are some wonderful benefits. Uh, can I say there'll be no more tears uh, uh, for our eyes. Uh, uh, down here, there's a lot of heartache. Uh, there's a lot of heart break. Uh, there's a lot of suffering. Uh, there are a lot of sleepless nights uh, uh, where folks cry themselves to sleep. Uh, uh, where folks are weeping over loved ones. Uh, where they're weeping over uh, uh, other things. Uh, but I've got news for you friend. Uh, when we get to the other side, uh, God himself uh, shall wipe away our tears. Uh, there'll never be another sleepless night over there. Uh, where there is no more night over there. Uh, and he the Lord uh, is the light of the city uh, can I say there be no more tears uh, can I say uh, there be no more death over there uh, there are no graveyards on the other side uh, there are no wreaths of death hanging on doors on the other side uh, over on the other side uh, there will never be any time for us to go uh, and place flowers on a grave uh, cause there is no grave uh, hey over here uh, we get separated from our loved ones through uh, uh, the terror of the king of terrors and that is death uh, but over there that king of terrors has been destroyed uh, there is no more death uh, over there uh, can I say there is no more sorrow over there uh, nobody has a bad day over there uh, there is no more uh, 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 pain there is no more uh, 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 anything uh, that brings hurt into our mind or our lives uh, listen some of us ought to shout and there be no uncle arthritis over there uh, one thing good about being in a drought and having no rain uncle Arthur doesn't show up as often as he usually does but listen you lived any length of time you've got some pain in your life physical pain uh Listen, 
I was talking to somebody the other day. We was talking about them days back when we was young and stupid and played a lot of sports. And we wouldn't take anything for it. And if we was allowed to go back and be young and stupid again, we'd still play sports. But I'm paying today for things I did 50 years ago. Because I was stupid. Because I heard a coach say, I admire a, a, a player that plays hurt. So I played regardless. There's some times I wish I'd have sat out a few games. Ah, but could I say we're going to land? There'd be no more pain. Uh, think of all the folks that suffer mental pain, mental scars. Uh, won't even be a memory over there. Be no more pain. There's the benefits of the other side. I said nobody's seen it, but the Word of God gives us some glimpses to the beauty of the other side. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 uh, and in verse number 14, uh, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Uh, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Uh, and he that talked with me uh, had a golden reed to measure the city, uh, and the gates thereof, and the walls thereof, and the city lied four square, uh, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, uh, twelve thousand furlongs, uh, and the length and the breadth and the height are the equal thereof. Uh, and he measured the wall thereof, a hundred and forty and four cubics, according to the measure of a man, that is, uh, of the angel and the building of the wall uh, uh, of it was as jasper and the city uh, pure gold like under clear glass uh, and the foundations of the wall were garnished uh, with all manner of precious stones uh, goes on verse 21 said in the twelve gates uh, were twelve pearls uh, every several gate was of one pearl uh, and it goes on to say uh, uh, in verse number 23 and the city had no need of sun neither of the moon to shine in it uh, for the glory of God did lighten it uh, and the lamb is the light thereof uh, and the nations of them uh, which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it uh, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for their ne uh, for there shall be no night there uh, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it uh, and there shall in no wise enter anything that defileth uh, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie uh, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life uh, in chapter 22 it says this in verse 1 uh, and he showed me a pure river of water of life uh, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and, uh, and of the Lamb uh, and in the midst of the street on either side of the river uh, was there the tree of life which bare uh, twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month uh, and the leaves of the tree for, for the healing of the nation uh, and there shall be no more curse uh, but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it uh, and his servants shall serve him uh, you say what are you saying preacher uh, I'm saying this place uh, has gates of pearl uh, walls of jasper uh, streets of purest gold uh, uh, can I say uh, there is nothing that shall defile it uh, there is no more curse uh, no more light, uh, nothing to mar it. Uh, there is no part of the city uh, that you can't go into for fear of your life uh, uh, because everything is wonderful, everything is beautiful. Uh, can you imagine walking down streets of gold uh, next to a pure crystal river? You can see the bottom of it. Uh, can you imagine uh, uh, the fields being clothed with lilies and with roses? Uh, uh, can you imagine how beautiful a place heaven must be uh, can I say uh, the wonders of the other side are the benefits are the beauty he said in John chapter number 14 in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you can I say uh, there is no dumps in heaven everything is a mansion it's on the other side Mm. can I say there's the blessings of the other side we get to be with the redeemer Jesus himself mm, the Bible said in Revelation 20, uh, 21 and 22 uh, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God almighty and the lamb are the temple of it we get to be with him 
forevermore. Can I say not only is there the blessings of being with the Redeemer, there's the blessings of family reunions. Huh? Any loved one that you've ever went planted in the ground that knew the Lord, you'll see them again Amen. on the other side. Hmm? Huh? My white-haired granddaddy has been waiting for me over on the other side. Uh, Bible says, and their works do follow them. He quit preaching a long time ago, but he's still preaching. Amen. Because I got saved under him. I surrendered to preach under him. And every time I preach, he's getting credit for it. Huh? My grandmother's over there. She's the one who bought me my first Bible. She's on the other side. My mama's over there. She's the one that told me what my grandpa meant when he was talking about being saved. Uh, I'm talking about well, I'm going to a place of reunion. A place where uh, family and friends that uh, have crossed over. Some of our dearest friends here. Can you imagine? Uh, over there we're going to get to see Sister Glory again. Uh, over there we're going to get to see Brother Charlie again. Uh, over there we're going to get to see the two Franks, the Muppets again. Uh, over there we're going to get to see uh, 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 those that we served with and those that we loved uh, and those that are our family. Uh, uh, just part of the blessings of the other side. Christians never say goodbye. We just say, see you later. No. Uh, those of us who love Brother Bobby, we'll see him on the other side. Amen. Uh, then I thought about the other blessing. All of our rewards are eternal because we have eternal life. Amen. Uh, I'm talking about the wonders of the other side. Amen. But can I say there's the way to the other side? Jesus said, let us... Go unto the other side. Can I say that modern re religion and man says all roads lead to heaven, but man will lie to you. The Bible doesn't say all roads lead to heaven. I want to tell you something. Not all roads lead to the same place. Say, well, all roads around here lead to the mall. Yes, but why would you want to go there? There ain't many ways to heaven. There's one way to heaven. John 14, 6, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's one way to heaven, and his name is Jesus. Right. Acts four twelve says, Neither is there any name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. There's one way. His name is Jesus. He's the only one that can take you to the other side. Can I say, uh, he uh, on that ship took them to the other side. If he wasn't on the ship, they wouldn't have made it to the other side. He's not on your ship. You're not going to make it to the other side. Your vessel will not make it to the other side. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says this. Uh, the apostle Paul said, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, uh, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, uh, and that he was buried, uh, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Uh, that's the gospel. That's the good news. Uh, Jesus came. Uh, Jesus came, paid your sin debt on Calvary. Uh, he was buried and rose again under his own power according to the scriptures uh, that if you and I put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and ask him to forgive us of our sins he's faithful and just uh, to forgive us uh, he'll forgive you and cleanse you my friend uh, the Bible said in Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God we were all shaped in iniquity uh, we were born sinners we sinned by nature uh, we sinned by practice uh, we sinned by choice uh, uh, friend uh, we were sinners. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, sinners uh, have a penalty. Uh, and friend, the only way we could escape the penalty was with the pardon. Uh, and the only way we could be pardoned uh, is by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, uh, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, uh, for 
that all have sinned. Uh, Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, uh, in that while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, Romans 6, 23 uh, uh, says, uh, For the wages of sin is death. Uh, hey, because we were sinners, uh, we had the penalty of death. Uh, but that verse don't stop there. Uh, it says, But the gift of God uh, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, you don't have to die in your sin. Uh, uh, you can live today. Uh, you can have eternal life. Uh, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life uh, and life more abundantly. Uh, you can live. Uh, your sins can be forgiven. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace uh, are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Uh, it is the gift of God, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, Romans 10, 8 says, But what saith it? Uh, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Uh, that is the word of faith which we preach, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, uh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. Uh, for with the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh, and with the mouth confesseth Confession is made unto salvation. Uh, for the scripture saith, For whosoever uh, believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Uh, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Uh, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, the girls are up there singing that song. Uh, uh, Miss Kinsey got all tore up thinking about it. Uh, she said she once was sitting where the priest preaching was preaching uh, and she started crying uh, say what was that uh, I tell you what that was uh, anybody that's ever been saved by the grace of God uh, was presented with the gospel uh, knew they needed to be saved uh, and can I say some get tore up and cry uh, uh, some uh, uh, rejoice in that they see the light uh, but any means uh, they'll come and humble themselves before God uh, repent of their sin and ask him to save them uh, in faith believing that God will do what he's promised uh, and he'll save them. Uh, hey, listen, I've got good news. Uh, there's another side uh, where everything is wonderful uh, and good news. Uh, you can go. Uh, how do I get there? Uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way. Uh, and friend, the Lord might have let you be here today just to hear. Uh, you can go the other side by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's the wonder of the other side there's the way to the other side but can I say this there's woe to those who, don't, who do not make it to the other side look with me in verse 36 the Bible said and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships. Can I say there were a lot of ships that day? But we only have an account of one making it to the other side. The one he was on. And friend, you may be on the ship of religion today. But that won't make it to the other side. You may be on the ship of, well, preacher, I was baptized. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If you're not saved, being baptized just makes you a wet sinner. That ship won't make it to the other side. You might be of the opinion of well, a preacher, I've done a lot of good things in the name of the Lord. I've, I've, I've served people that were hungry. I've gave people water on a hot day. Preacher, I've given money to help meet people's needs. Uh, I've supported charities. Uh, preacher, I, 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 I. It's not about what you do. It's about what he's done. Right. Yes. Yes. Bible said in Matthew chapter 7, many 
shall come to me in that day and say, Preacher, did we not, pro or Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do many wonderful, marvelous works in your name? And he says, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. There's only one ship going to the other side, and that's the ship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one he's on. Do you know him today? See, it's a dangerous thing to be on the sea of life because we don't know when the next storm's going to show up that's going to take us out. You better know the Lord. The Bible said in Matthew 18, verse number 7, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to any man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and to be cast into hell fire. You say, preacher, does the Lord expect me to cast my eye out or cut my hand or foot off in order to make it to heaven? No. The Lord is saying, don't let anything hinder you from making it to heaven, especially your pride. Don't let anything stand in the way of you getting to him. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 20, some of the saddest words in all the Bible. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's a tremendous woe for those that don't make it to the other side. There's only one other place you'll spend eternity. It's called the lake of fire. A place created for the, or for the devil and his angels. A place created to inflict punishment on supernatural beings. It was never intended for the soul of man to go there, but when man disobeyed God and man became sinful, sin came into this world. Sin passed upon all of us. Those who do not put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, God has no other place for them but the place of the lake of fire. If you're here today and you're not saved, oh, I beg you, I plead with you, don't put it off. Come to Jesus. Let him change your life because we want you to go to the other side with us. The last thing I've got this morning, I'll be done. There's a work to be done until we get to the other side. We don't know when we're going. We just need to have, a, have our bags packed and ready to go. But while we're here, we're not to be left here to do nothing. Amen. There's a work to be done. Matthew 28 and 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We're to warn sinners not to die without Christ. We're to invite folks to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord commissioned His church to go out and compel them to come in and hear the gospel and be saved and then teach them to teach others how to be saved. We're to disciple them in the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. My dear friends, we have a work to do until Jesus comes. I want to be found faithful and working when Jesus comes. Listen. I'm glad that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that I've been born again. Jesus told a religious man, Nicodemus, who came to him by night. Nicodemus asked him about all the great works he did and everything. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Can I say, I'm glad I got born again. Third Saturday night of March, 1974. 
See, I was born the first time when I was born into this world, but I had to be born again. I had to be spiritually born. And that happened third Saturday night, March 1974, when I turned from my sin and turned to Jesus and asked him to save me. Changed my life. Say, how do you know you got born again? Well, I was there when it happened. Amen. Hmm? I don't remember my first birth, but I can't get over my second one. It's been 50 years. I hadn't got over it yet. But can I say, he changed me. And he sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, I've never, I've never been perfect. I'm, I'm not perfect today. I fail the grace of God every day, but he that lives in me lets me know when I fail the grace of God. He don't let me get away with it. Uh, you know why some people can drink all the beer they want, cuss all they want, and live like a rascal all they want, it don't bother them? Because they don't have the Lord living inside them. Right. When the Lord lives inside of you, you do wrong, he lets you know. What a blessing. I'm glad I'm born again. I know it. My name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to the other side. Amen. Real question, friend, are you? Can you go back to a place in your mind right now where you met Jesus and he changed your life? Not where you joined a church, not where you got baptized, where you met Jesus. Can you go back to a place where you called on him and asked him to save you? Can you go back to a place where he forgave you of your sin? If you can't, you might have needed to be here today to hear this message so you can get ready to go to the other side. You might be here today and say, Preacher, I, I won't go to the other side, but I don't know how to be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about being saved. You can get it settled today because you're following the command. You're doing what Jesus said. You can be saved today from your sin. Nothing like being saved. Nothing like having peace and assurance and hope. When trouble comes and storms come, I'm glad the master of the sea lives in my heart. You can have some help today. You might be here today and you're saved. You know you're going to the other side, but you're not living like you should. You may need to come this morning and ask the Lord to help you. Because remember them other ships, somebody's watching you. They want to know if what you've got is real. They ought to see Jesus on board your vessel. This morning you may be saved. Everything might be right between you and the Lord, but you don't have a burden for somebody else to go to the other side. You ought to come and say, Lord, burden my heart, somebody I can share the gospel with. Pray over. See them come trust Christ. I don't know your heart, but I know the Master. And I know he didn't give me this message to fall on deaf ears. So this morning, are you going the other side? Is Jesus on board your vessel? If not, he can be. And there's no better day than today to get it settled. Friend, if God's speaking to your heart, why don't you come and do business with him? Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation. While they come, pick out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the day you came. And you changed my heart and life. Lord, I don't know anybody's heart. But Lord, you know everybody's heart. Lord, there may be somebody here today that needs to be born again. They're not going to the other side. I pray that the sweet Holy Spirit of God through cords of love would go right now and begin to speak to their heart. And I pray through true sweetness of conviction you draw them to an altar of repentance. Father, I pray if there's somebody here saved but not what they should be, that, Lord, they wouldn't leave this service without being all they can be in Christ. I pray for every heart. I pray for every burden on people's hearts. I pray that, Lord, you do great work here. And, Lord, we're just about ready to go around the bend to where we can see the lights of that city. We're about ready to cross over to the other side. This thing's winding down, Lord. Prophecy has let, it, let us know, Lord, we're living in perilous times and you're coming as soon. 
Help us to be ready to go to the other side. Speak to hearts now, Father. Have your will and way. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.